Hi, Neil Sean here. On today's short film, I thought we'd take a trip down memory lane and look at the explosion of what everybody terms the coffee bar era. And right here in the heart of Soho is where it really exploded, frothy coffee as well, in the early 1950s. So come with me, take a seat, possibly get a coffee, and let's look back at this wonderful golden era of Formica worktops, rock and roll stars, and above all, a frothy coffee. So here in the heart of Seoul is really where the explosion of the espresso coffee bar took place. In the early 1950s, well 1953, behind me here at the Mocha coffee bar would be the place to meet everybody who was the in crowd. The Mocha bar was opened by the fumatic film star Gina Lola Brigida. It's hard to imagine isn't it now that she came here, but she did. And the reason being is simply because they wanted an Italian flavour to the whole experience because the Gargia coffee machine was all the rage and everybody wanted a taste of that frothy coffee. But a man round the corner had a better idea. Well, so say some. There were lots of other coffee bars around this era. The Heaven and Hell, the Sabrina coffee bar, just to name a few. But round the corner here was the now famous Two Eyes coffee bar and a former all-in wrestler had a very brilliant idea to make sure it was the place to be seen and more importantly, the birth of British rock and roll. Let's take a look. Imagine here in the heart of Soho that this really was the birthplace of British rock and roll, but it really was. Anybody who was anybody made their name here. This is the former site of the Two Eyes coffee bar, and it was round the corner at the Mocha coffee bar that a former wrestler got an idea about opening his own coffee bar. And when he first started it, he had no idea really what an explosion he would create. He simply thought, well, they're taking a lot of money, I could take a lot of money. But the man in question then hit upon an idea which created, as we know it today, the British pop explosion. So Paul Lincoln, a former wrestler, otherwise known as Dr. Death, decided with a business partner to open the Two Eyes Coffee Bar. And a very clever idea it was too. Now, it was very successful even before it started shooting or appearing with music, should we say. What really happened was, he noticed that another coffee bar was having a bit of success thanks to somebody playing outside, busking, and a crowd was sort of gathering. So he decided that, well, what if he converted the downstairs of his own coffee bar and turned it into a performance place? And very cleverly, he hit upon an idea which really unlocked the doors to many stars of today. In fact, when we reel off the stars that this particular coffee bar created, you really won't believe your eyes or indeed your ears. So here at the Two Eyes, the stage consisted of around 18 inches using milk crates and planks. That was it. But that was all that was needed to generate a massive interest from the teenagers of the day who piled in to see a pre-fame Cliff Richard, Eden Kane, Tommy Steele, Marty Wilde. And if you were very clever, you may have seen Lionel Bart helping serve sandwiches just around the corner from the coffee machine. Now where it gets really interesting for me is I've been very lucky to meet some of the big stars who've got their break here. What I find exciting about this particular corner of Soho is simply that it's thriving with history and the fact that all of those people got discovered here is simply amazing. Hank Marvin from The Shadow said that, you know, really the two eyes was the big break that they needed. And also what I do like the idea about is the pop impresario Larry Parnes decided that here is where the action was and here is where he discovered the brand new talent that made him a multi-millionaire. It's also interesting to note that in a very short period from April 1958 really to 1962 was the kind of period of the two eyes simply because after the brilliant Billy Fury who wasn't discovered here but did come here to be seen um, really the Beatles took over and really the end of the coffee shop phenomena in this area as we know it decided to subside but those particular artists have lived on 
Who remembers seeing the golden disc with the brilliant Terry Dean? He was discovered here also and played here alongside so many. Now, Tommy Steele was very clever because while he wasn't necessarily discovered here, he did play here. And of course, his first manager, Larry Parnes, decided how to mould him and to become the international superstar he is today. But as Tommy tells me, it was very difficult times and hard to believe, of course, that they got paid so little. In fact, Tommy told me that I think he got around about four pence per single sold. And when you think that his records were going to number one and how many thousands they were selling, these people certainly weren't becoming superstars or millionaires. In fact, they were on a wage every week from Larry Pounds, which was possibly around about 60 pounds. A lot of money in those days, but certainly not enough to become a very, very well-off pop superstar. Let's not forget also that the Two Eyes was really prevalent in giving acts to the budding TV shows of the day. Shindy, 6-5 Special, Oh Boy, which was filmed, of course, at the wonderful Hackney Empire Theatre. Jack Good was the impresario of the day, and if you impressed him here over the noise of the screaming, the smoke and the frothy coffee, then superstardom could be come your way. Very soon, and very quickly, all that was replaced, as I say, with the Beatles and a brand new dawn of a pop music era. That's all because, straight after this, came Top of the Pops, proving that pop stardom really lasts no longer than around 18 months. But a lot of these stars have been proven wrong, of course, because the greats that have survived, like Sir Cliff, the wonderful Tommy, have proven that the way forward in this business is to become not just an entertainer, but a superb entertainer crossing all spheres, stage, variety, pop and film. And for that, we're grateful to the two eyes. <laughs>